Hi there, I'm Lee, welcome to iMind Blocks. In this video, I've got a cool thing to share with you. So I'm gonna be doing a head-to-head -head showdown of budget graphics cards. So specifically, I'll be testing this one here, which is the Sapphire Pulse RX 560. It's four gigabyte and it's the OC version. So I'm gonna be testing this graphics card, which I've used in my 12, uh, 13 GPU miner. So I'm gonna be testing it, but versus this, which is the closest equivalent NVIDIA graphics card. So it's a GTX 1050 Ti. So I chose both these graphics cards. I think they make a good um, head to head for your bun, uh, budget entry level uh, miners. So that's really what I was kind of uh, getting at. What is um, the graphics cards that an entry level miner could start off with? So primarily the reasons why I chose both these graphics cards is that they both have four gigabytes of RAM on board. There's um, some other sort of slightly cheaper graphics cards but they only have two or three gigabytes of RAM, so they're not gonna be able to be used for mining Ethereum. One other thing that both these cards have is a six pin PCI Express connector, which is gonna enable us to get sort of um, higher clock speeds um, because we can get more power to the card. You can also get like low voltage versions, which just have, they just basically power from the PCI Express risers themselves, but these have the extra power connector. So that's primarily the reasons why I chose both these graphics cards. So what I'm gonna do throughout this video is I'll be testing them on the primary uh, mining coins that we mine. So we'll be testing them mining Ethereum, Monero, and also Zcash. They're the three main ones. What I'll also do is probably like a nice ha a hash uh, benchmark, um, just to test them on a whole bunch of different other algorithms also. But they're the three main ones that I'm gonna be focusing on. So what I'll do now is I'll, I'll fit one of the graphics cards to the PC. Uh, we'll run through some benchmarking, I'll share those results with you, then I'll do the same for the, uh, the secondary card, which will be the NVIDIA card. And then I'll share the whole results with you, and then we can do a price comparison, and um, share all this data with you, and then you can make a decision as to which card you think is the best purchased out of these two. Okay, so before I fit the graphics cards, let's take a quick look at the, each of the cards uh, in detail and um, up close. So first up, let's have a look at the Sapphire RX. 560, so it's the four gigabyte and it's the OC version. They do lots of other different versions, but um, I would recommend going for this um, same version because you're gonna get the best performance. And it also has the six pin PCI Express power connector. So that's gonna allow you to get more power to the card when you're overclocking um, and tuning. The card itself is fairly basic. There's not too much going on. The heatsink, you can see there the size of the heatsink, it's quite small, but these cards, they only use around, fully around about 75 watts in any case, so they don't need really the biggest fans and heatsink combinations. Um, the fan, it's just um, an 80mm fan just on its own. If you around the front there, you've got a HDMI uh, display port and a DVI connector um, on the bottom. Not too much else going on anywhere on the rear side. There's no back panel or anything like that. So just a, a fairly standard basic um, GPU design. So as I've already mentioned, the primary reasons why I chose this was because of the low price. Uh, when I purchased it, I think it was £125. I'll check the price and I'll update uh, you guys accordingly. Uh, but the two other reasons was that it had a, an ex extra PCI Express power connector and also it had a four gigabytes of uh, memory. And a lot of the other cards are two gigabyte cards and you're not gonna use those, uh, able to use those for mining Ethereum. So make sure you get a four gigabyte um, card. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, 1050 Ti now. So this is the gigabyte brand card and you can tell from the, uh, the build of the card, it's, it's um, slightly higher end. Uh, but I don't want to focus too much on the fans and heat sinks because really I want to focus on the performance of the graphics cards uh, on a um, on model to model uh, kind of basis um, and also the cost and efficiency comparison not so much temperatures and things like that because it's very easy to get um, you know the, the sapphire pulse it's very easy to get another one of those with like a twin fan design so I'm certainly expecting this to run um, cooler and um, quieter obviously you've got two fans there and the heat sink spans across the whole uh, edge of the card. Um, again with this one, this is a six pin PCI Express um, connector. On the back of the card, it's got this um, back plate, which makes it look nice, but it's only a plastic back plate, so it's really just for cosmetic reasons. Top, like I say, twin fan design, so it's gonna keep it cool. Look on the bottom there, not much going on in the rear. And on the ports, it's got a few more uh, ports, 
So just to have a quick look, you've got uh, three HDMI ports, a display port, and a DVI uh, connector there. It's also, I think it might be a little bit longer than the uh, Pulse. Let's just have a check. Um, just slightly, just slightly longer. Okay, so that's the graphics cards there. Um, I'll fit the Pulse first, um, get that running, or we'll get it benchmarked, and then we'll do the, uh, the NVIDIA 1050 Ti afterwards. Let's continue on. Right, so this is the rig I'm going to be using for the testing. So it's my workstation that I would have used previously in my office. You would have seen it in some of my other videos. So it's got an i5-6600K. Uh, at the moment it's only got 8 gigs of uh, DDR4 RAM. The other 8 gigs is in one of my miners. And it's got a gigabyte K3 uh, gaming motherboard, I think it is from memory. Uh, the power supply is just a EVGA 600W, uh, so it's just a white rated uh, power supply. Nothing particularly... Um, special there and obviously we've got our graphics cards that we're going to be doing the testing with uh, so just your basic uh, cable connectors plugged in and I've got the power cable plugged in here just into a watt meter so I can check the power usage as we're doing the tests so let's plug in the uh, RX 560 first and then we'll get on with some benchmarking okay our RX 560 is fitted and the machine is powered up and we are ready for testing so I've just made a note of the idle uh, wattage I recorded at 48 and a half and just on the screen just got MSI afterburner up just so you can see the driver version but I'm going to continue on with the testing now and I'll show you those in some um, upcoming slides so now we have the 1050 Ti fitted you can see it's a zero RPM fan design so it's not currently running because there's no load on the GPU or no significant load on the GPU uh, just have a look down catch the uh, idle so just under 50 watts and just make a note of the drivers we're using 385.41 so let's focus on the performance of mining Ethereum the RX 560 managed to hash out at 11.4 mega hashes with the GTX 1050 coming in slightly ahead at 12.25 so eking out almost a 10% advantage over the RX 560 the interesting thing on this slide is that the performance usage on the 1050 versus the 560 is uh, quite significant with the 1050 Ti using only 61 watts versus the RX 560's 79 watts so the RX 560 is actually hashing slower but also using um, significantly more power when mining Ethereum so uh, this one it's all in favour of the GTX 1050 Ti. Next up we have our Zcash mining performance. So the RX 560 and Zcash measures at souls per second achieved 85.8 versus the GTX 1050 Ti's 173. So more than twice as fast for the 1050 Ti. Power usage was very similar between the two, uh, RX 560 using 68 watts versus one extra for the 1050 Ti at 69 watts. So this is quite incredible performance from the 1050 Ti doing more than double the performance of the RX 560 and only using a single watt of power more. So that's pretty incredible. 1050 Ti really does um, wonders really for mining Zcash in comparison to the RX 560 absolutely kills it. Here's the performance we achieved when mining Monero. So this is a interesting set of results. The RX 560 managed to hash at 333. So compared to the 1050 Ti, it certainly looks to have an advantage. The 1050 Ti only managed 277 hashes per second. So it looks like the RX 560 had this one. But interestingly, when we looked at the power consumption, it tells a completely different story. So the RX 560 was using 60 watts for 333, but the GTX 1050 Ti was only using 39 watts. It was literally sipping at the uh, at the at the tap of power. Not a lot of power uh, consumption there at all. So this is really interesting. I think with a bit of tweaking, maybe some overclocking, some optimized drivers or better software, I think the 1050 Ti can hash significantly faster than Monero. Um, I think it's just going to need a little bit of tweaking. I was really shocked at the low power usage uh, when mining Monero. 
So moving on to the next set of slides, we're going to be looking at the uh, efficiency for each of the GPUs on each algorithm. So we're mining Ethereum, we've got the RX 560 and comparing watts per mega hash. So what we want to see is less watts per mega hash and that would obviously be better. We're going to be using less power for more performance. So the RX 560 coming at 6.92 watts per mega hash, a 1050 Ti used only 4.97. So using less power for the same amount of performance. So 1050 Ti when mining Ethereum is more efficient. Next up, Zcash. Similar story here. Watts per hash when mining Zcash for the RX 560 is 0.79. Please remember that Zcash is mined in or recorded in hashes or souls per second rather than mega hashes. So that's where you get this kind of a fraction or decimal placing on the numbers. But again, a 1050 Ti, when mining Zcash, it uses half the power for the same performance. So 1050 Ti is very good for mining Zcash or Zcash uh, Equihash algorithms. Taking a look at Monero, similar story once again, RX 560 using 0.18 watts per hash and 1050 Ti using 0.14. So almost 25% improvement when using the 1050 Ti to mine Monero. Moving on to our final slide here, we've got the GPU retail price um, as checked today. So the Sapphire Pulse RX 560, and it's the four gigabyte overclocked version, retails at 120 pounds. GTX 1050 Ti, it's the gigabyte, four gigabyte version, it's a Winforce and overclock version also, and that currently retails at £145. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed watching that section. So I've shared all the slides with you, the information regarding the benchmarks, uh, the performance of each uh, GPU and on each uh, algorithm, and also the, uh, the power efficiency for each, each um, configuration as well. So in this section, I thought I'd just share my personal opinions on uh, some of the results and um, yeah, just sort of uh, talk you through the results that we've seen here um, during this test. So it's been quite interesting. So first up, let's talk on the Ethereum performance. So the 560 versus the 1050 Ti. There was really only one mega hash performance difference, roughly about 10% uh, improvement the 1050 Ti had over the 560. Uh, in addition to that, it also saved about 10% on power. So the 1050 Ti did uh, have a slight uh, performance and efficiency increase uh, when mining Ethereum or the uh, similar algorithm coins. So that was quite interesting. So it's a slight uh, performance advantage there, but not massive numbers really, but um, still interesting to see. The next up was um, Zcash. So that was really um, like a one horse race. The 1050 Ti smashed the 560. It was almost like, you know, double the performance, more than double the performance. So uh, for the 560, we had a hash of 85.8. Um, .8, and for the 1050 Ti, we got 173. So it was all over it. The other interesting thing is that the performance, uh, sorry, the power usage between the two of those graphics cards was virtually the same. Uh, 116 watts total system for uh, the 560 and 118 watts total for the 1050Ti. So more than twice the performance for the same power use effect effectively. So uh, really interesting to see that. So that's the Zcash performance. Next up we had Monero. So this is a coin that's kind of uh, re come back into popularization uh, in mining. And um, again, it's a similar sort of story, but the, the tables kind of turn back the other way. So it's interesting to see what coins you're mining or what algorithms you're mining favors uh, one graphics card versus another. So for Monero, the 560 had better performance um, with slightly more power usage. We've got uh, 333 hashes for 108 watts total um, with the 560 versus 277 versus 88 watts. So between the two of those, the, the performance to power usage is probably quite similar for both of the graphics cards there. Um, so not much, uh, such a strong um, performance or efficiency uh, contrast versus the, the the other algorithms that were sort of uh, being mining. So 
The other thing that I wanted to touch on as well was the um, the price of the graphics cards. So the RX 560 as tested with a single fan and just kind of a basic model. Um, I purchased it, I think when I purchased it, which is about a month ago, it was cost 125. I've just checked on Amazon now and it retails for 120 pounds. Uh, now the thing that I want to men mention is that that is kind of like the lowest budget RX uh, 560. You can get other versions with um, twin fan designs, better coolers. And those are going to cost you about £145, uh, so that's worth um, considering. With the uh, 1050 Ti, that was purchased just a couple of days ago, and that currently costs £145. Um, and again, you can get um, single fan versions and also lower power versions um, of those um, GPUs. So there's um, different options that you can go for. I think price-wise, it really depends on what sort of heatsink and cooler you want to go for and that is gonna um, affect the price roughly between sort of um, 10 and 15% overall. So let's talk about what one is the best graphics card for mining. And it's a very, very close uh, comparison between the two of these. So I would say between the two of them, it really mostly depends on what you're gonna be mining. Um, if you're gonna be mining Ethereum or Zcash, Kind of the obvious answer really is going to be uh, to go for the 1050 Ti. Um, it might cost you a little bit more if you get one with a twin fan, but you're going to get significantly better performance, particularly if you're mining Zcash or the, the associated uh, Equash algorithms. Um, if you want to go more for like Monero, like I said, there's no, there's no real advantage to it. If you really um, kind of want to get the, the ultimate budget build, then you might want to go for the 560, the RX 560, uh, just because it's going to reduce your capital costs initially, or if you have particularly lower cost of um, electricity, so that's one other thing uh, worth considering. That way you, you might be uh, more interested in using slightly more power if your capital costs are lower. So, but really between the two of them, for the average uh, miner or user, uh, the 1050 Ti is going to be the better card for mining long term over a wider range of algorithms. So it's been, it's been interesting. I've uh, quite enjoyed um, uh, making this video and seeing exactly what the performance is. So that's my thoughts on everything. Um, hopefully I've tried to uh, cover everything. Uh, one other thing I did, um, didn't include in the benchmarks is I didn't do any sort of um, overclocking or undervolting. And I didn't do any significant testing with um, different driver versions or, and also software versions. So between those combination of things, there's gonna be lots of different variations in your numbers. So that is worth, um, that's quite a, a strong point and it's definitely worth considering. So there's more testing to be done to find that ideal sweet spot, the ultimate best performance that you can get from these things. But from a basic sort of standpoint, the 1050 Ti kind of uh, wins out today really. So anyway, that's about it for this video. I sincerely hope you've enjoyed watching. If you have any questions or comments, um, let me know in the comments area below and I'll be sure to get back to you guys. And um, I'll leave it there for this one. Thanks very much for watching, I'll see you guys on the next video.